Morning. Morning. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to do it right then. Do you know, I am going to do it because actually, right, we had a bit of a rushed morning this morning and it shouldn't have been. I haven't felt rushed. No, but I mean, this just this last half hour. Oh, so yeah. So we hadn't even said hello to each other since. No, hi. Hi. I wanted like to give you a hug. <laughs> oh, it was good, that. Oh, yeah. Thanks oh. a lot. <laughs> So we've got today um, on our podcast, Shana, who's our Be Silver Black Country ambassador. Yeah. She's got quite a powerful story, hasn't she? Like, you know, when you hear it all played out. I just think she's incredibly brave. I really do. Yeah. I think it's such um, an inspiring story and it takes people like Shana to really stand up and talk about it and be honest. And yeah, I just think it's fantastic. So enjoy. And the weather. The weather, I'm sorry. I know I always talk about the weather, but the weather, the weather is sunny. It, doesn't it make a difference? <laughs> yeah. Like, people are nicer, aren't they? In, on a oh, sunny no, day. No, still loads of assholes no, around. <laughs> no, people, people are just nicer. Like, when you walk down the street, people are, like, more likely to say hello and things. Well, and... Can I just prove you wrong? No, I Alex. Alex. I like nice no, things. I actually wanted to tell you something today, right? I wanted to tell you something. I'm dead mad at myself. I'm really mad at myself because it's just, I don't know if I should be. So I'm going to tell you something now. Oh, gosh. So gosh. I was in the park before um, teaching my little boy to ride his bike. Oh, yeah. And there were three women for a similar age to us exercising. And as I walked past them on the way into the swings, I heard one of the women who was seemed to be the instructor say to the other two, She's so ugly. <gasps> Who? She, well, clearly they were gossiping about somebody. Honestly, that's disgusting. It took every fibre of my being not to say, actually, that what you've just said is really ugly. That's I was dead mad. Oh, go on. I, but I, I wish I'd have said stuff it. Stuff like this. But would I, what I want to know is, should I have said it? Three, well, women, three women versus me. <laughs> well, it's a tough one, this, isn't it? Because my everything in me wants to say, As it did with damn me. right, you should say it. Like, you go and tell that woman <laughs> that was an ugly thing to say. And it's I, I just hate stuff like this. It stresses me out. But also, um, I'm learning to let things go. Well, she also, <laughs> said, she also said very loudly, I never wear a bra, only when I'm on Instagram. So I thought, well, that just says it all over. Oh, because, stop it, Not Alex, because, because she I've don't got... wear a bra, do... right? And I'm not bothered about her not wearing a bra, but I thought she's one of those people who's all about putting on an appearance, pretending to be nice, putting on a bra for Instagram, and actually just an out-and-out -out horrible person who's saying to somebody, saying about somebody, she's so ugly talking about a physical Can I tell appearance. you the truth? I'm disgusted. Can I tell you the truth, what I really want to do, and I've been keeping it quiet because it's the podcast and I don't want people to judge me. <laughs> I want to go to the park and leather up. <laughs> Shall we go? <laughs> we won't leather a bush. We'll go and see if they're still no, there. No, stuff like that just really, it brings out my, my old self. <laughs> Here she is, the demon. Oh, but no, just it wasn't her. nice at all. It really wasn't. And, I, and part of me really wishes I'd have said, actually, talking yeah. about another human like that, commenting on their physical appearance is probably the ugliest thing I've ever seen or heard. It, it really know. offended me. People do things like that, don't they, to kind of distract from themselves. Or what, like, I, I genuinely do believe is how you view the world is how you view yourself. Yeah. So she clearly feels really ugly. Or and insecure. Or insecure. Yeah. Maybe she should put a brow on it, might help. <laughs> and maybe not just for Instagram, but yeah, I'm gonna try and take the positive from this. In yeah, that, yeah, and actually feel a little bit of compassion for her because if yeah. she feels like that about people and she's judging other people, in I, that do, way. I do, I do think that's where it comes from. You know, when people do feel really down on themselves, they kind of, and you know, if, if truth be told, we've all done something like that in our life yeah, where yeah. we have judged said someone. something yeah. or judged somebody because of how internally we're. Yeah, yeah, or feeling. assumed they think yeah. I'll mean something. Yeah. But I do have to say, and I'm saying this through gritted teeth, that she was actually very beautiful to look at. And on that note, <laughs> enjoy Shana's interview. <laughs> Hi, Shana. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's about time. I know, guys, do you know what? I've been wanting to do this for so long. So thank you for having me. I feel like all the like really cool, famous people come on here and I'm like, when's it my turn? Oh, <laughs> you're cool and famous. So it's definitely our turn. 
you've got your own podcast now as well haven't you yeah we just um finished our first season um a couple of weeks ago it was just a bit of a probably like you two but I think you guys had a bit more of a focus it was just me and my friend Lisa and we wanted to do one we didn't really <laughs> we didn't really know what direction we were going in but after the first few episodes we enjoyed it so we thought oh let's just carry on if no one listens no one listens we don't mind we're enjoying it so we just yeah and it was actually turned out really well and we had some really good guests on as well so, so I mean, having a little break at the moment yeah we're, we're now thinking right when's it our turn <laughs> <laughs> do you know what that how good would that be though me and my friend you two well, but you know what? We did a four-way podcast once, so oh, we've done a couple now. But the first one we did, do you remember when we did it with Joe and Hannah? Oh yeah, that went that went terrible. We never <laughs> we didn't release it. We didn't actually release it, and there was nothing wrong with with anyone. Nothing wrong with what they did. It just didn't gel, did it? No, it really. Didn't. Yeah, it was really weird. But the sound was terrible on it yeah, as well, it and it kept cutting it? up. And one of the Wi-Fi kept going off, so it, it was just yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't the best one, but then we did one with Mark and Liam, that and that was good. fantastic. And Kerry and Josh. Oh, yeah, Kerry and Josh as yeah, well. Oh, we'd love a four-way. <laughs> I think that'd be good, because, yeah, we obviously only, yeah, done it with each other and then had the one guest. But that, I think that'd be quite funny. Oh, it'd be so nice. And I just think there's something so lovely about doing it with your friend. Like, we set out like that. We used to have these conversations, and we was like, how funny would it be if we actually recorded them and then put them out there. So to think now that we've had all these guests on, it's just ridiculous. I can't believe it. You know what somebody said the other day? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know what we're going to talk yeah. about it? <laughs> so I, I went, know you're going to talk about it. I know what you're going to say now, though. So I went for a walk on Sunday, and I'd put the pictures on my Facebook. And this um, one of our listeners, Thursa, bless her, she's listening, had put on, oh, my God, somebody famous in a cave near me. <laughs> and I'm like looking around like who the hell is she talking about <laughs> and I was like shut up <laughs> oh my god well, well the funny thing is when at the beginning honestly you have never met bigger fangirl it was me it was at more than you weren't I I was like oh look let's get William Porter on oh Claire mm. Foley oh who else can we get I was like a maniac Shana like an absolute maniac getting in touch with all these people and Lisa go oh, god Alex no no more no more stop it but I was so like obsessed with getting everyone on and you forget people who are listening they don't know your normality do you know what I mean they don't realize yeah your and you're hosting these big groups this big support group massive kind of social connections for people and to you you're just you and to other people you're doing an amazing thing and it's like it really brought it home for us didn't it yeah. just how special and I know you know this being one of our ambassadors but how special Be Sober really, really is. It, it's, it's such a lovely community. I don't know. Like, I've had, I'll just, I don't know if this person's got in touch, but I had someone emailing me yesterday asking about joining. And she said, I just wanted to know, like, you know, is it a friendly group of people? And, you know, what do I get? And I could not stop going on about it. And I was like, and it's not just because I am an ambassador. There's just something I'm about this compared to other groups I'm not dissing the other groups you know everybody likes what they like for different reasons but something about this group it's a sober community without feeling like it's a sober community yeah, yeah. because uh, although that is what's brought us together and we do talk about it and we support each other and you know we don't we don't kind of talk about that stuff lightly but we come in and have a laugh as well <laughs> and everyone just gets on and it's just I love it I really do and I don't know I, I'm just I think it's just going to be massive I think it'll just get bigger I agree because with you. I, I've said this from the beginning like there's just been something and I think it really I just think it's so needed like when I stopped drinking I was so frightened Shana that I wouldn't have any friends or community or I'd just be so alone and I was in the beginning I was so on my own with it and then I got to the point where I was like well actually do I need to meet people because I'm all right here in my sober bubble on my own doing my own thing and then when I started to meet them and realize how much in common and this sounds like dead dramatic but for the first time in my life 
being 40, stopping drinking, meeting these people for the first time ever, I actually felt like I'd found my place, that I fitted, that I didn't have to pretend to be anybody else. I didn't have to scratch around for conversation or to try and please anybody or pretend to laugh at stuff like that was so irritating <laughs> like pretending <laughs> things were oh, funny I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though isn't it you know like it is and the thing is you don't even know you're pretending until you stop no you, know you I mean? like i literally you don't realize you're pretending something doesn't feel right but you don't know it's just because you live in this lie basically yeah. and then one day it stops and it's like oh this is what it was meant to be about this I've just I don't know what the last 20 years have been about but I'm here now yeah Yay. it's like being I know I'm being proper dramatic today she is it's not only me <laughs> but it, it not it is actually like being reborn isn't it like I said this to someone the other day I said I except feel like I've just started my life over again like I literally have started a new life and I love it absolutely love it but yeah i don't think it's dramatic i do think that's what it feels like <laughs> oh, we're all a lot of newborn sober babies <laughs> speaking of like sober okay so you just said the last 20 years you don't know what i know you're not gonna have time for the whole 20 years <laughs> oh no oh, please, please don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> but just fast forward the key points of what actually well first of all how long have you been sober now shana um i'm coming up to 14 months well done it's amazing thank you so what brought you to that point waking up 14 months ago and going this is it I 14 months ago it was a bit of a joint me making the decision but also kind of a little bit of an intervention in in of sorts in that um I don't know I, I kind of started telling this story a little bit but not that openly I was sat at home one weekend in February, no, January of last year and I was on my own and I wasn't answering the phone. I was going, I was going into one of my little bubbles of ugh, not feeling great. The depression wasn't in the best place. And I was just feeling shit and my parents were away and I had one of those weekends where I didn't want to talk to anyone. I think after a day or so of not answering the phone, my parents were probably like, what is going on? Because they, they knew you know, they knew about the drinking and they knew I was in a good headspace. So they were always really worried. For some reason, this time they thought, they must have recognised I was going down that deep, whatever, again. And it sounds awful when I say it now, but I'm sat there on a Sunday afternoon drinking. Not, I wasn't blooded. I wasn't anything like off my face or anything, just watching TV drinking, not wanting to deal with the world. And somebody walked into my house, <laughs> literally opened the door and I was like, what the fuck? And it was my neighbours. Really? Yeah, my parents had called the neighbours and said, we're worried about her, can you go and check she's all right? And, I mean, at that point, you just think, this has got to stop now. This isn't just my family, my immediate circle of people that are that I'm impacting with what I'm doing. This is, my parents have had to call yeah. the lady up the street who happens, you know, she's known me we've lived in the same street for the whole time we've been in this house so but she's seen me grow up and now it just felt like oh my god it wasn't a rock bottom in the sense that I was you know at a desperate point in my life but it was rock bottom in um oh, I don't know how to explain it in a kind of realization yeah yeah this has got to change um so I went and stayed with my auntie for, I like, my mum had also called my auntie. She came to pick me up. We had to take my dog to the kennels last minute. You know, it was just all these people having to rally round to sort me out. And I was like, what are you doing? So, um, yeah, that's, that's basically what it was. Stayed with my auntie, had a flight booked to India, and I got on the plane. And I knew that when I landed in India, that was it. No more. So I made uh, use of the free bar. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I thought she got pissed on the plane, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, I, I did, I and mean, I didn't. I didn't get. I wasn't ridiculous, but you know, th yeah. there was drinks, and it's a nine, ten hour flight. So, um, but yeah, I knew that once I got off that plane, that was it, and I was okay with it. 
I was like, that's it, it's over. Yeah. And making that decision, I didn't even have to have this big discussion. We did have a discussion when I got to like home in India with my mum and dad. Um, I think they thought they were going to have to convince me again, this needs to stop, but not realising I'd already knew that was where I was at. So we had one chat and I think for them it was, she said this before, but for me, it was a case, okay, I just need to show them now. And I did. I just, the next few months, it was completely different because I didn't, I wasn't resistant, resistant to that whole, I need to stop drinking. It was like, all right, I'm ready now. And I was a much nicer person. I did a lot of work on myself. I mean, you know, what better place to like go and sober up was in a really nice sunny country and the environment was just perfect. So I was quite lucky that. Can I ask you about that? Because, you know, culturally as well, yeah. coming from the background you do, yeah. being a drinker, I, I, I know that maybe it's more accepted than it is in some faiths and in some cultures, but it's still, as a, as a woman of colour from India, culturally, tell us about that. Was it, was it shameful, do you think, or, or um, is it shameful? I think so. I think there's still a... Um female in so I'm um Hindu Gujarati females women do drink but it's still not it's done still not done openly yeah. um so for me growing up once we got to 18 we were allowed to drink we were allowed to go out my parents were very you know chilled out about that kind of stuff um you know it, was, it wasn't like go off and do what you want but be sensible but you're allowed whereas I know there's still people my age who it would be frowned upon mm -hmm. if they did drink they would do it on the when I say on the sly they wouldn't do it out in the open in social gatherings where family and friends were around you know it's still something that you don't want to make your parents look bad whereas for us it didn't really matter my mum and dad were fine with it um but you just noticed you'd go to certain settings like if you went to a big like another thing is that we didn't really kind of immerse ourselves in our local Asian community very much. We didn't grow up mixing with them that much. So once in a while when we did, we'd notice the difference where, you know, a lot of the girls weren't drinking, but the men would be at the bar. And if I said, oh, I'm going to go and get a drink, my mum would be like, oh, you know, do you have to? As in, we know, we, we you know, we don't mind, but not today. Because it was just, you know, frowned upon, I guess. Um, but I had the uni life. I had, I did all the usual things, moved out home. I went abroad. I went traveling, lived in Australia. So I just kind of carried on living my normal life. But when it became an issue and my parents were aware of it, I think it would have been a massive struggle for them because having daughters who drink anyway is a little bit like yeah. a nicky subject. And then a daughter who's got a problem, well, I, I don't know how that made them feel. And they probably were really, they supported me, but I don't know how they dealt with kind of the outside community. And, you know, there would have been stuff that was said. But then again, I think we were a family that were always talked about anyway, because we weren't quite... I don't know how to say it. Um, Informing, Shana. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you know, it wasn't just the alcohol stuff for me. For my mum and dad have probably got people around them going, oh, look at their daughter. She's 40 now. She's, she's living back at home, not married. Oh, she's off work again. And I heard that she was, you know, they know about little bits. And I must just look like this. What is wrong with her? This is probably what they're saying. Um, and add, add to that a drinking problem so <laughs> you know but at the same time it's always been something we've not we've tried not to let bother us people are going to talk and they can say what they want to say what my, I, I know that my family are behind me and we're all a close-knit you know family we're there for each other and that's all that really matters to us but the whole culture thing it is a problem um and I don't know if you listened to it in the end when I was on the radio a few weeks ago. Um, that was quite hard because it was the BBC Asian Network and 
the people in the discussion one was a lady whose partner was go at the time going through AA he'd in lockdown got him you know he was always been a drinker and it kind of got out of control and then there was a few other people talking about other family members and I was the only one that had been invited on to talk about my you know struggles and my journey with drinking and then coming to sobriety so that was a little bit like scary knowing that not many girls would talk about it yeah, yeah. um oh, I'm really glad I did yeah you did you did amazing and like bringing light to it because we were talking about this the other day there are people in all, all walks of life anyway but certainly in some cultures and some religions in society where if they have got a problem because of the nature and the beliefs and the way that it's treated they can't ask for help so there's a lot of hidden there's a lot of hidden alcoholism and drug addiction in yeah. certain parts of our society in Britain and I think you saying look you know what I am Hindu. It was accepted. I did. I did have a problem. It's just an incredibly courageous thing to do, and it brings light and it brings hope to people who are maybe struggling alone. So, you know, I, I really do think you should be massively proud of the way that you've been able to do that. Genuinely. Yeah, I mean, I think I've said to you guys before. You know, after a few months of being sober and kind of getting involved in the Instagram community, especially yeah. not seeing any other Asian females in there, and I thought this is bizarre. I cannot be the only person yeah. um, that has got a problem or is open about it. I thought there's got to be some other people out there. I'm not the only one who drinks or did drink, so I just thought, well, I'm going to start talking about it because maybe there are other people and they just need somebody to start speaking about it um when I did go to like an actual one we could see each other and yeah. meet people a few years ago when I did stop briefly I went to some support groups and again there was no other in fact there weren't any Asians at all one or two maybe there's no way like you've just said that there can't be problems do you know what I mean yeah. it's just so hidden and, and shameful and you know they're not able to go and get the right help or don't no. or don't feel they can maybe it's not that they're not able to actually maybe it's just that you don't you know they don't feel able to do it I, I want to ask you about um you said earlier that you, you'd not hit a rock bottom but you have hit some pretty shitty rock bottoms have you? yeah um so before about that. before the end of the drinking my rock bottoms were my first I'd say my first rock bottom was when I was in Australia and I just come out I'd my a relationship that I was in ended and I didn't take it well when you live in like on the other side of the world your friends your little circle of friends become your family yeah. so you know when and the person I was with was friend first so suddenly not having that you know it was quite difficult um messy end of relationship and so it was like one minute we were trying to be friends, one minute we were like, oh, I can't see each other, this is not going to work. And it was just not very nice for a few months. Um, and just before Christmas, I think it was 2012, he'd actually gone home to Belfast for Christmas. Um, and literally he'd gone, he'd been away a week and I found out I was pregnant. And I... It was horrible because we were in the middle of a fight then as well, not speaking. I was like, shit, I've got to tell him this now. Like, what the hell do I do? So I told him and it was just horrible. You know, for me, I, at that point, and to some extent still am, always just thought I would have a family. And I'd by that age, so I was 32 then, by that age, I expected myself to be, as a lot of people do, settled, married, you know, kids. And all of a sudden, I have this, well, I'm in a p position where that might become a reality, but is this the reality I wanted? And um, I had to make the worst decision ever because he basically said, this isn't what I want. If you want to have a baby, I will support you. He also said he would resent me and the baby. Oh. And... I'm on the other side of the world and I hadn't hadn't told anybody I had told the person I was living with my flatmate and a couple of other people 
But I just said, I'm, I will have to move home. And if I move home and he's going to support me, he has to move home. And how do I take somebody from a life that's trying to build in a different country back to have a life where he doesn't want to be, resent me, resent the, like it just didn't. Yeah. I just sat there and I was like, I can't believe that I'm having to make this decision. Um, but I, I did, I had to, and it was just horrific because it was a week before Christmas, no family, a couple of friends around, and I was just very alone. Um, and I felt like I dealt with it. Yeah. But I don't, <laughs> I don't think I did, and I didn't really until he came back in the January and we met up, and it was at that point, I think, the reality of what had happened surfaced and I spiralled quickly yeah. dramatically I was off work um I was I did start drinking a lot but I was on all sorts of medication because I wasn't sleeping um I don't know it's just it's a blur I'll tell you he came back in the January and the next I'd say four months four or five months are a blur it does go like that doesn't it but when anything traumatic happens and I think yeah you know, it's so important for people to realize this these different forms of trauma and whether or not it was choice or whether or not it wasn't choice it impacts you so deeply because you really had to make a choice that wasn't a choice at all didn't you it was like yeah I mean place, you know yeah so I, I'm not sure if I fully accepted that you know that choice still I feel better about it these days because I look back with a clearer head and go you know what was did I have a choice but at the time like I say I can't I can't remember how but there were just it was just a blur there was drinking there was being off work just being miserable a lot of alone time the person I lived with I think just couldn't cope with seeing me like that that she would spend so much time away from the house yeah, oh, yeah. um so I was by myself yeah. um but that resulted in and it sounds ridiculous when I say it now but in the space of six months I think I ended up in hospital three times from overdosing because I'd got to the point of everything I'm feeling want, needs to stop it needs to stop and I don't know how else to make it stop um and that's the only way I can describe it well, and it got to a point when mum and dad said we can't look after you there now you're gonna you're gonna have to come home so I came back were the overdoses accidental overdoses or were you actually trying to get away from life I was trying to get away Oh, it's so here it, but like, and it really is like, I can't imagine. I'm looking at you now, and because we know you, and because we see your positivity, and because we see these posts you do on your personal Instagram and on the Be Sober Instagram, it's so hard to imagine Shane are so low and lost when you were positivity, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I don't recognize that person anymore. I can't, so when I speak about it, it sounds so ridiculous like how could how, how was I in that position and not just once I kept getting back I just kept because I wasn't dealing with things or maybe I thought I was and then a year later or something else you know what it's like that you think you've dealt with the bigger problem or the bigger issue you haven't really so a year later or two years later something else that isn't even that big will trigger and you end up back in that position again. And this was just a cycle that went on literally probably until just maybe about a year and a half, two years ago. What do you think you'd say to yourself, Shane? And if you could go back, what do you think you'd say? Uh, I don't know. I think it would depend on what, like I've done this thing where I wrote to myself, as a baby though like as a toddler yeah and that was all about telling myself I was going to be okay like you will be all right and everything that's going to happen is going to be so hard but you're going to get through it and there's going to be a reason and you will if you can get through it you will understand what it's for and why it's happened that's the only way I choose to look at it yeah. I have to look at it like there was a reason for it all, which I don't know, maybe makes it a bit easier to accept. Give me goosebumps. 
no. the thing is watching you now and it's like Alex says we won it's so hard to imagine you like that and how much you help other people now like you really do um I just think it's, I just think you're amazing, Shana. I really do. I'm so, I feel so blessed that like you've chosen Be Sober to become a part of. I really do. I just love it. I feel really honoured that you've done it. And I'm from the start. Yeah. 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 Do you know what and the weirdest thing was? It just, I felt it happened so quickly. It was like one of those things that, right, I need to kind of submerse myself in a sober group oh who are these people they're saying they're looking for ambassadors do you know what I mean it was like that <laughs> yeah. well, do it. why not <laughs> can, can I just ask you like something else as well on the on the back of that because yeah. I think it's kind of involved if you were and I know you do so if you were helping somebody who's gone through similar to what you've gone through and you're looking at your the beginning of your journey like what do you advise them in terms of getting sober staying sober and just dealing with life what would you say is the best thing to do I mean, obviously for so long, I couldn't get myself out of that pattern. And the reason I know is that my mindset was never, it was, it's always, it just comes down to mindset and the way you think. And I know it's easier said than done because people probably did try and say it to me. Um, but I think it's, everybody's going to have shit stuff happen to them. Everybody at some point or another. And it's, it's looking at it as this, as a way of this is happening but it's how you react to that situation that isn't the important one you can sit there and just I don't know be a victim to it just sit there and do you know what when I had to admit that I'd been playing the victim all these years that was a hard thing to say yeah you know that you know I, I could have changed and gone I'm not going to let this happen I have the choice you that's a thing it's a choice you have the choice on how you take something on board how you deal with it are you going to let it impact you for the next year or two years or the rest of your life or are you going to look at it and go what can I take from this and how can I move forward and holding on to stuff that's happened gets you nowhere oh. and that's what I did I held on I held on to all the shit that happened to me, all the shit I was putting other people through. Um, like seeing my parents in pain the entire time that I was being this awful, not awful person. I was just going through an awful thing. So I'd feel guilty. Then I'd feel like, oh, they're better off without me. I just, you just can't pull yourself out of it. But it is, it is a choice. You can stop being that person and it sounds I know it sounds like oh it's not that easy and it's not you need I do think you need people to help you through it you need the support you need the guidance but I do feel like it comes down to some of the things that are in our head are simply that just things in our head yeah thoughts are thoughts you're right and I think ultimately like you say you need a community you need people around you but ultimately only you can step out <laughs> yeah being stuck and you know and, and getting out of it and you're just an absolutely brilliant example of someone who's done it and you should be massively proud of yourself and and just to reiterate what lisa said would we're, we're so grateful to have you as one of our ambassadors is this our first ambassador interview yeah. you're also our first ambassador <laughs> interview How good is oh, i feel special but no i like it just feels right this whole everything that's happened in this last year has never felt I've never had that many feelings of things being right just happen one after another and it's all since I became sober. You sound like Lisa now. <laughs> yeah, no, God, Lisa. Yeah, every single day I'm grateful to be sober for something and honestly it can be but the more I think about it and the more grateful I am and I know it's cliche and I know there's loads of these things about gratitude and we go again with the gratitude right but the more you find things to be grateful for, the more things you find to be grateful for. Yeah. It, it's just so true. And it can happen the other way. The more things you're pissed off with, you know, it, it works either way. That's why it? people so you might say, as well be grateful. Well, that's you? why people say, isn't it? Oh, things, bad things keep happening to me. They do. But bad things happen to you every day. But if you can take a different slant on them, like you were just saying, mindset and go, yeah. 
that's happened what do I learn from it what can I take away how can I change and yeah you know what I, I say this every time shit things do happen in life sometimes we just get handed bad stuff and there's nothing yes. to do about it and that's that's true but in most situations when bad things happen we can either wallow or we can learn yeah I think you've got and I think as well you know like it doesn't matter what has happened and it's not always your fault but it is your responsibility yeah. to how you react to that situation yeah. and I think that's important because it's so easy like you said how hard you found it to admit that actually you'd been playing a little bit of a victim in your own story yeah. and that is freaking hard to admit nobody wants to say that well actually yeah but we do do it yeah when you when you when you see that and admit it and step away from it you look back and think bloody hell like yeah. <laughs> and yeah it you know coming out the other side of it is hard because it's realizing some of the ridiculous thoughts and things you did yeah. could have all you know not happened you could have made a different choice and you won't be the person you are now i know and this is why somebody said you know what would you change? I'd never change a single thing because I wouldn't be here. I would not be here having this conversation. I have to, you have to look at it that way. Whether it was just shit past or a great past, don't change it. Yeah. You yeah. can't. I, or, yes, or, own it. That shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, right, like, Shana, we're dead grateful you've been on. We love you to bits. We think you're a fantastic ambassador. We know where we can find you. But just for everyone listening, tell them a little bit about what you do. Obviously, don't forget to mention Be Sober as well. Um, <laughs> what you do and where we can find you. Um, yeah. Can I just say, did you get how many times I plugged you on BBC Asian Network? I was like, so I remember, even without asking, I, I, I was like, right, get me sober in. Yes, <laughs> but they don't like it, you know, they don't like you plugging things. So well done, so impressed. <laughs> like, oh, did I say it? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, was that Be Sober? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um so um i'm mainly over on instagram a lot so you can find me at uh, my instagram handles at shana underscore kcj and there's a link to my website on there which tells you all about the coaching i do so yeah like alex i'm a coach which came about purely because of all the shit i've been through <laughs> and the fact that i can help people you know get through the same kind of stuff i absolutely love what i do um it's I've never enjoyed something so much in my life I just think it's brilliant being able to just have conversation it's you know it's just conversations with people and being able to get them to think about things differently and see how beneficial that is to somebody and how it can change their life um I had a coach that did it for me and now I just want to be able to do the same for other people so yeah Instagram you'll find links to everything from there so and you're at be sober black country on instagram as well aren't you for yourself yes yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and you're doing a fantastic job and you've got to walk this I sunday i was just gonna say yeah we can because this is out on saturday yeah you've got to walk this sunday haven't you because no not this sunday at the end of the month, end of the month. i think um, one of the other groups have got this sunday possibly but yeah i i am um, i'm doing it for the end of the month which is basically the walk that was planned for october that never happened <laughs> is, it the la is it the last sunday of the month 25th so yeah it will be and where's that going to be that's um so if you're from the black country or this area in the midwest midlands it's at kimber edge um just kind of on the border of staffordshire and worcestershire um which sounds weird because i'm in the black country but that is actually like 10 minutes down the road very bizarrely so i think we even heard of the black country until i can't you believe you had an still. ambassador who said oh when i had the live with tom last week he said he didn't know where i was from yeah no i've never heard of it i yeah. thought it was just maybe i've heard of it because my husband's from birmingham so i but i just presumed everybody knew no. <laughs> it's a i mean it's a it's just an, a, a nickname i guess given to this area because of the industrial you know stuff that went on here yeah, someone said to us the other day oh you allowed to call it the black country i was like yeah it's just about the industry it's nothing <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's nothing political let's calm down now <laughs> it's purely because you entered this area you know, years oh, ago it's, it's got all the <laughs> yeah it's funny 
Um, what was I going to say as well? I cannot even for the life of me remember. I was going to add something to, oh, I know, 30 days sober if you want to join one of our Be Sober events. And we might as well give our little sober experiment, give away a plug here. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So we, um, for anyone who's not yet 30 days sober, but who wants to give it a go, at Be Sober, on our Instagram page, you'll find our link tree. And from Monday, which is the bank holidays, to bank holidays at the 5th. 5th of April. We are giving away our 30 day sober experiment. Um, and obviously, if you are 30 days sober, you can still do it. If you're years sober, you can still do it. It is about the all famous mindset change that Shane has <laughs> been talking about. Um, and if you want something a little bit more, come and join our Be Sober community as a member. Um, check out our website, www.besoberofficial.com and join Be Sober and you'll find all the details of everything we offer there. Well done. I know, that was that was fun, That was it? wonderful. Yeah, like, <laughs> so I never do that part. We really know the like, you know, that, that stuff just baffles me. I can't get it out of my mouth. It all goes wrong. <laughs> Normally, right, Lisa does two W's, www dot. And I go, I'm doing it. Why can't we just say be sober official dot com? We'll do that. Yeah. We'll do that from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Coming on, Shane, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for having me, guys. See you soon. See you later. Bye-bye.